O Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may, be ple we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if only you would put up with the little foolishness for me, please put up with me. For I am jealous of you with the jealousy of God, since I betrothed you to one husband, to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I'm afraid that as a serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts may be corrupted from a sincere and pure commitment to Christ. For if someone comes and preaches another Jesus than the one we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it well enough. For I think that I am not in any way inferior to these super apostles. Even if I am untrained in speaking, I am not so in knowledge. In every way, we have made this plain to you in all things. Did I make a mistake when I humbled myself so that you might be exalted, because I preached the gospel of God to you without charge? I plundered other churches by accepting from them in order to minister to you. And when I was with you and in need, I did not burden anyone. For the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied my needs. So I refrained and will refrain from the burdening you in any way. By the truth of Christ in me, this boast of mine shall not be silenced in the regions of Achaia. And why? Because I do not love you, God knows I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth. For justice and truth. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth. Majesty and glory are his works, and his justice endures forever. He is one renowned for his wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth. The works of his hands are faithful and just, sure are his precepts, reliable forever and ever, wrought in truth and equity. Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You have received a spirit of adoption as sons through which we cry, Abba, Father. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the pagans, to his disciples, in praying, do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. My Old Testament professor passed on a, um, a mystery to me that I want to pass on to you because he's a professional. He wasn't able to solve the problem, and I'm a parish priest. I wasn't able to solve the problem, so I'm going to pass it on to the lay people. The question is, when you get uh, Elijah and Elisha, you look at them, and you see that uh, in today's first reading, you see all of the different things that Elijah is praised for, and then you see all the things that Elisha is praised for. Which, and you see Elijah has this really long list of things that he's praised for, and Elisha has a very small list of things he's praised for. And yet what, what ends up happening, if you know the story, is that Elisha was the disciple of Elijah, kind of uh, you know, following him around. And um, when Elijah was about to be taken up into heaven on the fiery chariot, uh, Elisha said, uh, was supposed to leave him alone, and he wouldn't. He, uh, he, Elijah says, just let me go. I'm going to go off and do my own thing. And Elisha says, no, I'm never going to abandon you. And so Elijah, as a reward, says to Elisha, um, well, what would you ask from God if uh, you could ask for anything? And Elisha says, I want a double portion of your spirit, Elijah. I want um, whatever Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit had given you, I want double that. And Elijah said, well, if I get taken up in this uh, fiery chariot, well, then you know that God answered your prayer. But otherwise, you know, like, it's not necessarily mine to give. That's God's uh, gift to give, but I'll ask it for you. And sure enough, Elijah gets taken up in that fiery chariot. And so now we realize that Elisha has a double portion of Elijah's spirit. So here's the question. How, when you look then at the accomplishments of Elisha, you're expecting him to have a really long list he doesn't do anything with it. We, we see this one uh, really amazing situation where there's an entire army that's kind of standing against him, and then they all run in terror because, you know, nobody else could see anything, but the army saw this um, army, this legion of angels standing behind Elisha. But that's pretty much it. And so you have this situation and this puzzle where you have this one person who had a large portion of God's spirit and he did a lot with it, and you have a guy who did, had double that spirit and doesn't have many accomplishments to his name. And so I guess the puzzle is that, that something left, that we're all left scratching our head over is um, what, what exactly did Elisha do with that spirit? Did, uh, did he perform a lot of deeds that we don't know about? You know, and they just never got recorded in Scripture. Um, what, what, what good did it do? And so I guess the, the moral of the story, and it's just, you know, a, a very small one of the day, is it really doesn't matter what your gifts and talents are from birth. 
what you've been given from birth. What really matters is what you do with them. And so, brothers and sisters, on this day, I don't want to say be like an Elijah and not like an Elisha, because you know what? If Scripture honors him as a prophet and as a good man, as a holy man, I'm not going to demean him. But definitely today, I want to point out Elijah and say, look at what he did with half of what Elisha had. Look at what he accomplished. Take the gifts that God gives them and be good stewards of them. Your time, your talent, your treasure, whatever God gives you, see how you are able to help out your brother today, your sister today, your neighbor today, and see what God prompts you to do and go and do it. Be like an Elijah today. Let us stand and offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. For the Catholic Church throughout the world, that God will continue to guide us in bringing his word to life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations around the world, may God guide them in upholding human dignity in policy and practice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are poor, hungry, or thirsty, May God show compassion upon their suffering and enliven the community to meet their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church gathered today, may God give us courage in leading lives of faithfulness and word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died from natural causes from chronic illness or from the pandemic, especially members of our faith community, May God grant them mercy and everlasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Today and every day, we pray to the Holy Spirit for his guidance upon the rulers of our country and all countries as they work in unison to develop just, peaceful, and fair policies in hatred, discrimination, and racial disparity across the country and across the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer you these, our prayers and petitions. We ask you to hear and answer them, that they be in accord with your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of the Lord in his name. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, 
Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in mind or spirit. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, your spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter, and with all the saints on whose constant procession in your presence we rely for unfailing. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, Mitchell our Archbishop-elect, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be. The prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so bring it about, so bring about unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ.